Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of StarCraft Inc. Today's game is between Imba Loeli as the Yellow Zerg in the bottom of this map. This is uh, the Shattered Temple. And over here on the left, we have Virus Elfie. Now, this is actually my first game watching these two play. I've never seen either. Actually, I think I've seen Imba Loeli play, but I've never seen Virus Elfie play. And I can't say I remember much about what I've seen from Imba Lueli, but he is rank 9 in the Grandmaster League, and his opponent, Virus Elfie, is rank 12 in the Grandmaster League. So if you were looking for hints, tips on how to play these two races, these are players to watch. Um, look at that. See? Did you see what that probe just did? If you rally, that was his... Uh, that was his uh, his tenth probe. If you rally the construction of your tenth probe to this location right here, if your opponent spawned in this position and sent his overlord right away, you will catch the overlord before it can see you and pull back. So you will not have to scout. That's how he found him right away. And little things like that. That's what makes the grandmasters grandmasters. Just little tiny things, man. Um, so as you saw, I did have a picture of Imba Loeli on record. I did not have one of Virus Elfie. So guys, if you ever see in my intros that I do not have a picture, if you know where I can find a picture of that player, send me a link. I will go get it, and I will have that for future games. Um, but Google Images can only get me so far. Um, and as for the picture in picture, some people love it, some people say it's uh, annoying because they can't really keep their eyes on the main screen. For those people I say you must have ADD, but I will cater to you anyway. Um, so we will keep picture in picture in the games, but they will not be on constantly. I will keep them up for things like um, uh, any kind of two prong play or drops when there's a com when there's some sort of conflict in the middle of the map but there's also a drop going on I will do split screen to keep track of the two separate battles that go on so I do not miss a thing um, but other than that I will not leave them on constantly um, and if you guys really despise that choice if you guys are so in favor of having them on the entire game let me know that too and I'll consider it so we do see zerglings coming out for virus or for uh, Imbaloli to Imbaloli, Imbaloeli to chase off Virus Elfie's probe so he can throw down his expansion. Um, so not doing the Idra style with the two harvesters. Now Idra is one of the only players that I see do that and I'm not sure what the preference is um, why Idra chooses to do two harvesters rather than lings. There, there must be an advantage of it because as you know uh, Idra is easily one of the best Zerg out there. He is rank w he was rank 1 on the North American ladder for quite some time um, but uh, now he is rank 3. Um, he dropped down to rank 5 for a little while but came back to rank 3. He's still sitting in rank 3 comfortably. I like this here. Virus Elfie did in fact um, skip the stalker and just went to sentry. Now I'm not sure why he dropped that force field. That was actually a pretty bad force field because there still is that little leak. Lings can get around. This Ling is scouting the entire base, and the sentry cannot catch it, and that is completely frustrating. Um, the probes do get it down, so he is fine there. Uh, Imbaloli does... Imb forgive me if I call him Loli, I know it's Loeli, but... Um, so, he does have an overlord here. He could suicide this overlord to reveal some tech later. Um, there's two gates going down, so this is looking like a three-gate expand. Especially with the pylon coming down here, that is a very big giveaway of plans to expand. Um, and he is bringing a queen down here to his natural and we will probably see creep spread connect these two bases although he doesn't have a oh yeah okay I must be blind I couldn't see that queen there for a second but it's there he does have a queen at both bases so good I was a little bit confused but uh, yeah guys we do have a Facebook page it was created not too long ago um, it doesn't have any of my subscribers from YouTube on it, it has a few um, a few who have wandered their way over there, but guys, go like my Facebook page, unless you're a closet gamer and are too cool to have games on your Facebook page, 
Um, or maybe you just don't like StarCraft Inc. In that case, I'll just kill your family. That's fine too. But uh, go like that Facebook page because every time you like or you know give a thumbs up to something I put on there, all your friends see it. And any of those guys who are interested in StarCraft, they'll migrate to the page. And from the page, they'll migrate to YouTube. And the more viewers I have on YouTube, the more incentive I have to produce videos. And uh, you know what? I'm, d I'm planning on doing some giveaway contests in the future in the near future and I'm hoping for some pretty big giveaways so um, hopefully guys you know give me some viewers and I will return the favor uh, but look at this <laughs> look at this overlord spread here for Imbolo Ellie that's hilarious it's like a grid a network of overlords I've never seen anyone do that before ever that's pretty funny but on the other hand, he doesn't really have any map control. If there were pro like he has map control, but not map view. If there were proxies any at these bases, he would not see them. He's not doing any kind of map scouting, which is weird. He's got the tower, uh, but <laughs> you know it's not really any kind of control. His creep spread is very minimal, but I mean it's still pretty early in the game. Only eight minutes into the game, he doesn't have a third queen yet, which is also kind of strange. He uh, he's quite confident in the fact that virus elfie will not attack him i think but even so uh Imbaloeli does have quite a few roaches on the map at this point and he will be pushing in with lings and roaches this is actually quite a scary push he does have a lot of sentry but he doesn't have any meat um a couple cannons going down hopefully they can finish in time Imbaloeli is waiting for his roaches and he waits any longer these cannons will be completed this is going to be quite the push. If that pylon goes down, that'll be pesky too. But he's just going to snipe the forge, which anything like that, is, a free building is a free building. Now there's no upgrades on the way for Virus Elfie, which there weren't before anyway. But these force fields cut up the roaches and the cannons slaughter them. Oh my goodness, he did get a forge, but was it worth it? Going to the unit's lost tab, that was painful for Imbaloeli. Oh my goodness, I don't know why he didn't try to run by with his lings at the same time. It would have forced some energy from Virus Elfie, and I think he probably could have got them up into the main. But, uh, I don't know, he didn't really get anything, and now the forge goes back down. All that did was soak up damage while the roaches died, so... Uh, man, I don't know if I agree with that push from Imbaloeli. It looked so promising, he had a lot of shit. But, if anything, he does have a bit of a contain here. However, I think if Virus Elfie warped in an, his next wave as uh, Sentry, he could easily take this. Um, but he does have to think about getting Stalkers. He, <laughs> look at Imbo Loeli dropping... Uh, he's dropping lots of spine crawlers in, in anticipation of a push. Um, but I think it might have been in his best interest to put them here, seeing as how... This is his newest expo. It is the gold. If he can hang on to the gold, he's in really good shape. We are seeing a macro hatchery, meaning this the sole purpose of this is to gain extra larva. And basically, it's it's extra production. So if you didn't already know that, now you do. And look at this. We do have Imbaloeli smashing down the rocks up here so that if Virus Elfie takes his third up in this location, it will be easy picking for the Zerg as well as maybe thinking about picking up these rocks. So it looks like a viewer is tired of this game and has left. We didn't want you here anyway. And Virus Elfie is now pushing out. He has no idea that this is here. This should move up and start breaking down these rocks if Virus Elfie is not in his base. That will do quite a lot of damage if it can run by to this line because there is no defense back here. Um, but the warp technology is good for stuff like that. And uh, yes, it is... Oh, maybe not. I thought he was going to come here and start working on those rocks, but we do see a lot of lings up here. They're going to come down towards... What is he doing? I, I don't know. He's got to commit to something with those lings. He's just kind of dancing around. He might be going for a run by. There's nothing here. He can't really fight those cannons, but he can run by them. And that's what's going to happen. Hold position, locks down the line, and kills so many probes. Going back to the production tab so you guys know what's going on. We are seeing wicked upgrades coming from this. But as well as Virus Elfie pushing this expansion, he's now going to lose his gold, but will not be able to uh, take the second. Virus Elfie will not be able to get past these spines as well as infestors. There's fungal growth ready on those infestors, and that is going to be scary. Um, he does have blink completed, obviously, as he blinks forward to destroy those lings, and lots of lings coming out for Imbaloeli. 
Fires Elfie trying to replace his probe count. He is v barely saturated at this base here. In fact, I would say not saturated at all. He is now going to be breaking down the rocks. Um, and he does have an observer, which that's going to be key when the infestors start burrowing. Um, burrow roaches are also quite scary. Um, and this overlord still still just chilling. Probably completely invisible without high ground. And look at this. Another viewer takes off. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. This game is going places, I think. Um, we're going to be seeing some pretty epic clashes going on, as far as I can tell. Um, but we are seeing the spine crawlers move up, which is an interesting tactic because he will be retaking this gold. And he is working down the rocks here so that he can get into this as a fourth. And uh, there, look at this constant scouting. We just saw one of these vanish, as it is a hallucination, not a real phoenix. And uh, I I'm curious as to how that looks on low graphics setting. Is it, is it obvious to tell on low graphics setting whether that's hallucinated or not? I think they look pretty awesome, though. I love hallucinations. But anyway, um, yeah, he is constantly combing the map. He is seeing that the gold is going back up. That is vital information for him. And an overseer, a sacrificial, goes in and sees that there is a lot of gates here. So actually looking at player one's view, this is he sees pretty much everything that's going on in this base. Um... He, even with this Overlord, look, the Overlord scouts High Templar, so that is key. And uh, it looks like he has broken his own rocks and is pushing up into this space. And now, <laughs> oh god, E for everyone. Um, he is going to see this pushing up the map. Um, I don't know if he saw that actually or not. I think he had the tower, but I could be wrong. Um, but regardless of whether he saw it, this is happening. It sounds like a rape slogan, this is happening. But anyway, so we are seeing a large army push forward. And Elfie's army is up here at the third. Uh, not even going to bring it forward. I'm not sure why. He's positioning, like I guess, to stop a run-by. Because if a run-by happens, it is going to be so difficult for him to chase down. There are a lot of investors here, and they are all at full energy. And that's scary as hell, because Fungal Growth does a lot of damage to armored units. And... It doesn't need to do a lot of damage to light units because light units don't have a lot of health. So this this is scary shit right now. He could kill the entire Protoss army with chain fungal growth if the Protoss army lets himself get caught in a ball like this. If he doesn't split his army, he's going to be in trouble. Although I don't think he knows that infestors are on the field. Oh no, he is splitting up. Storm going down on the roaches. He needs to spread out. Oh, he's so clumped. But now these investors are naked. Fungal growth is probably going to go down. It goes down on all the Templar. And one fungal growth almost kills them all. Fungal growth going down on the Zelts. Feedback going down on the investors. But, oh my gosh. More fungal growth going to be going down soon. I hope. Why isn't he fungaling that? There he goes. He does fungal that. And look at the damage it does to the shields. One fungal takes out the entire shield of that stalker. That was almost... That was... 60, 68 damage to that stalker from a fungal growth. And uh, had that have been a chain fungal, look at free fungal growth. He's going to lose his shield and more of his health. Look at that fungal growth just tearing apart that army. It is almost no health. Oh my goodness. Ah, that is so good. But there was a run by here at the same time. <laughs> a player cam. Player cam, yes. But uh, so at the 18 minutes, I gotta remember that. And we're going to throw up a player cam for that. So, um, we do see um, the Gold Expo being fully saturated. Uh, you realize that there's only six patches. That is the one downside to that expansion. So, you will mine that out pretty quick. Whereas, you know, the normal expansions have eight patches. But, we'll see. We'll see where this takes the game. Um, that is, I'm going to take a look at the income tab, actually. We see 72 harvesters to 63, and the income is still way in favor of the Zerg, even though he has, uh, what am I talking about, even though he's already had in harvesters, so of course it's in favor of the Zerg. I'm fucking retarded, but that's okay. To all you retards out there, I apologize if I offended you, but I'm still retarded, I'm just, I'm just saying. And you can forgive me later, or you can forget, depending on what your retardation is. God, I'm offensive, and I love it. Uh, fuck you. Uh, so we do see infestors and lings and roaches in the middle, and that's been predominantly the unit mix we're seeing. However, corruptors are coming out in, in anticipation of Colossus, but wisely so, because we do have Colossus on the way, as well as centrifugal hooks for the banelings. 
and uh, the stock count's pretty high, which it's kind of counterintuitive. Fungal growth is deadly to stalkers, but at the same time, you need the mobility of the stalkers to be able to split yourself up, to spread out, and to hunt down those investors individually. You need to blink on top of them and kill them fast before they can chain fungal growth anything. And uh, you can do it in small clusters, like five, four stalkers at a time, splitting them up into different locations. Um, s to force the fungal growth down in different spots so that the same units can't be fungled. And uh, if you're having trouble with fungal growth, I know I am, that is one strategy you can use. Just kind of force them into uh, bad situations. Look at the... those stalkers are darker than the other ones. Two of those stalkers are da darker than the rest of them. You see that? I hope you see that. I see that. That's really strange. Um, so we are seeing an engagement here and blinking forward, although he never got on top of the infestors, one infestor does get away. And uh, that was quite one-sided. We do see Broodlords, and I wasn't even looking at that in the production tab, but wow, that is going to be scary. He needs to, but this is a terrible spot for Broodlords to be. Uh, bringing up the infestors in behind so that if the stalkers blink forward under the broodlords he can fungal growth them and surround them with lings what a potent yet brilliant concept <laughs> he's using the broodlords as bait they don't even have to be in a good place watch he needs to pull this out now lings come in oh but it's an anti-trap storm was ready for this he knew that was coming he knew that if he blinked under those broodlords that would happen and he was ready with storm he countered the whole situation brilliant play by virus elfia did not see that coming and now morphing in an archon to recycle those high templar um this one needs to be an archon too because he's not going to last long one fungal will kill him um, but hopefully he does have enough energy for storm and each storm counts so much he is going to come in here and take out this expansion for Imbaloli, which he needs to do killing zerg production is so important drones are so easily replaced especially when macro hatches exist such as this one if he's good with his injection replacing drones is not a big deal look he's coming in getting an overseer as well as another hatch but we do see a counterattack of zerglings coming up the map this high templar does scout the situation oh it would have been better if he could have gotten off a storm with that templar but it looks like fire self he might lose his gold expo and i say might but i mean definitely and we are going to see the army retreat and come back to try to defend this expo. He does still have a third, but that means the Zerg is up so many bases. And I would say that was a sloppy blink. He could have done one wave at a time, but he blinked everything at once. And uh, we do see those Lings destroying that gas geyser, which is so frustrating. Such a small thing, but so frustrating. And more Broodlords are out, replacing the ones that he had lost. And... I like this play wisely not getting too many broodlords at once because it is a costly investment and if you spend all your cash on one unit you'll regret it when it gets hard countered. So we do see Virus Elfie pushing across the map as Ling scouting for any kind of leftover units sitting around so that he can take his expos again. So very wisely doing that not sending his drone there by itself and uh, we will see him take that expo again shortly I'm sure. Uh, lots of infestors, lots of broodlords. He's trying this strategy again. However, we do have the same mix here as last time. And Virus Elfie, we know that he is uh, pretty much immune to that play. But I, I'm still... I, look at this! We're going to see two-prong <laughs> player cam. But yeah, no, I, I'm so impressed with that play with the broodlords. Baiting the army forward and then fungal growthing them and surrounding them with lings. I love that. And I loved the storm behind the uh, broodlords not on top of the broodlords to counter that situation now we are seeing this go down um do we even need the player cam i don't know i thought it was going to be a two prong but it looks like this is all there is a fungal growth here this is very similar to smash cab's nuke play style i like that a lot and uh the infestor did go down i believe um but this is causing a lot of havoc um blink being used to keep as many stalkers alive as possible um and that is cleaned up I don't think that did nearly as much damage as it was intended to. Um, I don't know if he lost any overlords in that fray. I don't think he did. But, uh, alright, that was alright. We'll, we'll give him that. He, he, uh, I think he killed a few stalkers. I think that was expensive for him, but I don't know. He's way ahead in the economy. He can afford to uh, chain, exchange units, but, you know, he's making me look silly here because look how much money he spent on broodlords and he doesn't have much of an army to support them. So if the stalkers get underneath this, that'll be bad. That's going to be a lot of money down the shitter. 
and uh, but at the same time they do so much damage. Storm going down under all of those Broodlords. Did I see Transfuse? I thought I saw Transfuse, but I must be wrong. More Storm going down. He's going to lose all of these Broodlords. However, a lot of Stalkers did go down. In fact, I don't see any Stalkers supporting this army anymore. I think the sheer firepower of these Broodlords alone has been able to overcome the Protoss army. These are some brilliant units here. They are so powerful. Um, like the carrier, but they do not cost money to fire. And... Uh, once again, they do distract the units on the ground, so A attack is not efficient or effective at all. And uh, warping in some more stalkers, that is what he needs. And all these broodlords are damaged, so they will be free picking once the stark, uh, stalkers can get some shots off. I'm trying to save the two that did survive. He may lose this gold again. He's definitely going to lose that pylon. Poor pylon, it did nothing to anyone. And uh, more stalkers coming in. They are going to finish off these broodlords. But what to shoot at? The broodlords or the infester? That infester probably could have gotten some chain fungals off. More broodlords coming in along with Lings. The production here from Imbaloli is overwhelming. And it looks like Virus Elfie cannot keep up using his cannons to get away from the broodlings. And this is unbelievable. I don't think that Elfie can pull himself out of this. It's going to be a miracle if he does. But man, what an epic game we have in front of us so far. Creep spread is really starting to kick in for Imbaloeli. He is swallowing the bottom half of the map. But we do see Lings pushing up into the top here. And man, I don't even know what to say. Holy cow, what a game. Virus LV does GG in this game. Goes to the rank 9 Grandmaster Imbaloeli. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm Mrs. Sin and you're watching StarCraft.